first and foremost, we think about measurement as learning. There's no right or wrong answer. And we encourage our marketing people to think really holistically about performance. There's only opportunities to make better future decisions. So we get them to think about uh, long-term things like brand equity, uh, penetration. We get them to think about market share, profitability. And you know, once they've done that, we uh, encourage them to uh, really make better decisions on, on the back of that. I've been working in marketing effectiveness for 10 years and in all of that time, last click attribution has been criticised, ridiculed in some ways, and it does have plenty of flaws. You know, It doesn't take into account everything that happens before that last click. For example, it won't take into account the fact that if you see a TV ad and then go and search for that brand and then buy from that brand, last click would only take into account that search and, and wouldn't take into account the TV ad that you saw that you know had as much of a, of a part to play in that specific instance. So it's flawed and it's criticised and yet it's still in use and I think one of the reasons it's in use is due to its simplicity and its ease to understand. And I think there's so much complexity, there's so much innovation and, and new techniques in play that it can often you can often tend to rely on the stuff that's easy to understand and simple rather than stuff that might be a bit more black box or, or harder, to exp harder to understand. It leads us uh, very quickly to a focus on short-term uh, responses and attribution. And the analogy that many of us are using at the moment, which is that we're plucking all the fruit from the tree but we're not watering the tree, is a good one here. You, know, you want to be building up that earlier stage in the funnel which often means a focus on other tools that are not impossible to attribute, but are much harder to attribute in a, in a, in a sort of long and, and an enduring way. Perhaps unfairly, I've called them spreadsheet jockeys because they tend to sit right at the end of the funnel looking at very small, incremental, but you know, powerful returns. And I think they're missing the bigger picture. And, and that's the big thing. The bigger long-term picture is, is missing from this analysis. I think you can get very transfixed on the short term and I think that's always a tension within the business about data. The tendency will be we know digital will drive a cost per acquisition of that so we'll throw more money there. Um, and then there is an enormous risk there that you don't put money in terms of brand spend, your awareness drops down, people don't know who you are and you will find after say six to nine months you're having to throw more and more and more, and more money into acquisition, you're spending more money on paid search and you just spiral. Um, and it's very hard then to get yourself out of that. I have real concerns about many of the so-called attribution studies and attribution modeling that goes on at the moment. And a lot of evidence that I've looked at suggests that they should actually be called misattribution models because they don't really apportion the appropriate credit to the channels, particularly the channels that deliver over the long term. So, um, you know, there are good models and there are not such good models, but generally building models is the way to go. We have to have collect the data and we have to model it. We have to look at patterns over long periods of time and work out for ourselves, uh, you know, what is driving these things. So if an advertiser is purely looking at the, the short-term effects and evaluating their investment based on that, uh, then they're going to come to very uh, different decisions. They're going to, if they're an FMCG advertiser, uh, they're not going to advertise because if you're an FMCG brand, you don't get a profitable return uh, in the short term. However, that doesn't drive any long-term effect. And if you start to incorporate the impact that you get through your marketing in the long term, then everything adds up. You see from an FMCG point of view that you do actually get a really good profitable return. And from, if you're a retailer or if you're in finance, you can see that it's much more sensible to invest in your brand, to invest uh, in reducing your price sensitivity and grow larger profits over this time period as opposed to just cutting costs and taking money off prices. What we know is that it takes time to embed behavioural change in consumers. I can't serve one message to you and change your whole world view about this brand and this category. It takes time to do that. So these short-term tactics, short-term strategies tend to deliver little spikes in the kind of sales terms, but then people revert to previous behaviour because we haven't embedded any change. Whereas the long-term approach embeds that behavioural change, we become drawn to that brand, we, uh, we are more likely to come back to it another time because we'll remember the message, we'll remember the brand. But it also creates other 
powerful and valuable benefits such as uh, price elasticity benefits. We are prepared to pay more for those brands that we like and that we cherish in some way or another. Um, and again, we get none of those benefits if all we are serving is short-term tactical messages. Being able to talk about the long and short-term effect of our marketing right down to the level of activity actually is much more powerful with our senior leaders, particularly our general managers and our finance people. I think marketeers need to understand how the business makes money, they need to understand the economics of the business and they also need to understand the short, medium and long term uh, financial uh, impacts of marketing. When you are constantly on a bit of a, uh, a short term ROI um, treadmill, you will look at marketing as a cost in total. Whereas the longer term piece, which is what we've managed to really embed into the business, which is really looked at um, joining up our commercial elements, so the great econometrics work that we had already, which is short term and everyone will acknowledge that, but then we brought our brand metrics and our brand data together and we've modelled the two to come out with something that says actually we can prove the long-term effect of our brand spend. Long-term brand building, in my opinion, is the most important thing. And when you're in a competitive context, you'll have parity of service that you're providing to customers alongside your competition. So the one thing where you can help have an advantage is an emotional connection with your brand. So why people should use you versus the competition. So one of the things that we're looking at is much more frequent uh, econometrics dip which will enable us to do more frequent forecasting and help the business in a much more responsive way. So looking backwards to look forwards much faster. So on a quarterly basis, I produce a marketing dashboard and actually that goes across all of our business units. So from our teams in Singapore to the guys in Europe who work on our French direct business all the way through to the US. There's a number of reasons we do that. One is insurance is a very, very numbers based business. So it's a very effective tool to talk to our exco and talk to our board in a way that they're used to. So it's very numbers driven. They can also see how well we're performing versus the previous year and how well we're performing versus budgets. So they get a very good feel for the investment that they give to me and how well we're spending it. So that runs alongside a regular marketing board report where I might talk more broadly about campaigns. So you get the discussion about sort of short term and long term metrics. And it also gives me the opportunity to engage with people on a weekly or monthly basis if they've got questions on it. It's using different evaluation effectiveness techniques through which you can triangulate. So we look at digital attribution uh, and different digital attribution platforms in order to get away from the tyranny of last click. We're using uh, marketing mix modeling to understand our increasingly sophisticated mix of channels, how the interplay of them delivers results. We look at brand equity building to really understand over much longer time scale how brand equity is impacting underlying commercial performance. Thank you.